Hello and welcome back to the studio where I paint away the stress of everyday life here in Wales. Okay, so one of the main questions I get asked is, what do you look at over there, Clive? Because I always look this way when I'm painting. Well, sometimes I got sketches, sometimes I got my monitor going uh, so I can see what you can see. Other times, um, I, I just got reference photographs stuck to the wall. Now, if you want to skip straight ahead to the painting, then click this time number there. And there, that will take you straight into the painting. But before we get there, let me show you what I've done on this occasion. As you can see, there's my little drawing. There we go. I'll take, bring it a bit closer to the camera for you. There's a little drawing. I went for a little walk in the woods over the holidays. And, um, and I come across this lovely farm. And that's not too far from me down in a place called Talagan. Yes, if you're familiar with um, uh, Wales around about the Cowbridge area there's a little place called Talagan and that's this is this is a little thing I've come across a little farm buildings and things so I had my my sketchbook with me because that, that's what I intended to do that day and as you can see you don't need to draw in order to paint so I done some quick reference lines I'll go through that more on the canvas with you in a second I'll just just put little notes in there there's a tree with ivy on it there's a road here this was a mix of grass and mud um, there was a table or workbench against the side there. The the roofs were red or brown. And that was a tool house. This is a cattle shed. That was a farmhouse. Um, and it had uh, two sets of chimneys. The f focal point was going that way. In other words, it was going that way. So it was narrowing that way. Narrowing to the right. There was some trees in the background. And I thought for a bit of fun, we'd put some mountains in as well. Because it's Wales. Just wanted to break this up a bit. And there's another tree then with ivy on it. And that's as simple as that. Yes. So I put that there. And that's what I go by. Okay. So I put that on the canvas. As you can see. I drew um, a line there across. That's one focal point. I've put one focal point. I put the cattle shed there. There was another focal point. Uh, not a focal point. Um, a plane. Sorry. There was a plain line there, another plain line there, because that's further back than this one. So that's a plain line, what they call plain lines. Everything on that lane, these lines, are planes. There you go. So I drew that in. Um, these are quite straight. There's no focal point there. The roof on this one was going slightly that way. So if I carried that on, it'll, it would meet over there somewhere. Um, and again, with this roof, was following the same line as that. This is, <coughs> oh, excuse me. This is the tool shed. Again, that's on a separate plane line there, that side. Um, but there is a video in the iCards which you can have a look at. So, and that's basically all I did. Um, and that's all you need. Um, you, you just need a, a rough sketch, some lines, just so you've got an idea of where things are. And as you've seen in other videos, you know, we can move these about and alter them if we want to. Um, and that's the nature of a way to build up a painting. Um, as you can see, the palette, I've got a range of brushes. You don't need a lot. Um, and most of these are um, short flats um, in different sizes. i got a little blending brush, uh, some detail brushes, and i got a script liner and uh, a few filberts. And that's basically all the brushes I'm going to be using. I will explain that as I go on. Okay, and the palette, as you can see, the colours are there in front of you. And again, I'm using um, my mix or a medium mix, which is going to stop my paint from underbinding. If you haven't got any of that, don't worry. Just use plain water. But please bear in mind that don't over thin your paints more than 35%. Otherwise, they could flake away. Now, what I'm looking for is um, I'm just wetting down my palette. What I'm looking for is some white on my brush. This is a one inch short flat. And I'm going to pick up, um, I'm going to pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue because I want the warmth of this sky to come through and I don't want it um, I, I am put a, a ground on this canvas so we, we're going to paint without the ground today so I just want to block this out very quickly so I'm just going to put that sky in like this and this is a reclaimed palette um, canvas palette <laughs> it's not palette life it's a reclaimed cam canvas um, so I just basically cut it off another frame and turned it around and and I'm painting on the back of another painting. And then you can do that. Um, because this will most probably just get thrown away when I'm finished anyway. Um, I do a lot of that just for YouTube. And a lot of these paintings just get thrown away. Okay, so let's just paint in. You can paint over it like that. If you're, if you're confident enough, you know where your lines are. Or you can just paint over it like 
paint around it if you want to. Um, there you go, let's just put this guy in. Quite light. We've got a little bit of warmth there. Quite light. There we go. I got a bit of a mountain. I said I was going to put some mountains in just for the fun of it. And because um, this is not going to represent a true scene, it's just an idea of a scene I thought I would do. So the place exists, but I thought artistic license, we can throw in a few things. So I'm just going to build this guy in, put a nice layer of paint on, blending in as we go. Just picking up some more white. Just the colour of this coming into the brushes. A bit too white there, so let's just get a tiny little bit of tiny little bit of ultramarine blue on the brush. There we go. I don't want to go down too far because I want to put that mountain in. I make a couple of mountains in actually as I uh, as I progress with this. I took a few photographs which um, I've also got on my sideboard. Um, I'm not going to put them up for you to have a look at because they, there's no relevance there really. Um, I'm going to be using a little bit of this one, a little bit of that one, and I don't want to. I don't want to fill the screen up with photographs. I thought it'd be nice just to see the painting build. There you go. Just a nice, nice light sky. I think today. There we go. Hardly any cloud in the sky. It's just so distant, it doesn't really matter anyway. There we go. Now I got some no, I got some process blue here. Um if you haven't got any process blue, don't worry. Um just get some cerulean blue. It's basically the same, but I like a process blue is becoming one of my favourite blues as well. Um and the paint um is actually the Windsor Newton's um Galleria acrylic range, as you can see that's processed cyan. Um, and they range for about um, five or six pounds, 250 mil or 8.4 US fluid ounces. Very nice paint, and um, that's what I tend to use these days. But as I said, there are other ones out there in the marketplace. So I'm just going to put a very bit of light blue in the, in the background there. Just lighten that off slightly with a little bit of white. There you go. And that's going to represent maybe a distant hill or something. Put a little bit of, just get a little bit of ultramarine blue in, just a warmer section of it off, because that's so distant. There we go, that's so distant, and blur that in, like that. So the sky and that type of rolling hillside is just slightly merging together. You can hardly see where one begins and one ends. I'm just getting a little bit more blue on my brush, just to give the emphasis of maybe that rolling hill there like that bit of shadow there you go so you, you could do this as a winter scene I suppose you could if you wanted to do this as a winter scene you could incorporate some snow and stuff on these on these type of things you could quite easily do that again let's just bring that mountain across and maybe just between this building and that build in there. There you go. A little bit of ultramarine blue. Who knows? Just looks just nice, doesn't it? It looks distant and because we're gonna put some trees in front of this, so that's gonna fade away anyway. So we might not see much of it, so as we don't wanna we don't wanna work too hard. We don't wanna work too hard on that and, and worry too much about that section because we're going to put trees and things in there so 
but we just want that little, little type of, look, I'm a mountain type of feeling. Just a, anyway, just a little bit of difference between that and the sky. Let's just put a little bit of shadowing in. There we go. And then clean your brush. Okay, so um, I dry that off a little bit um, just to make sure it's it's uh, ready for the next bit. And as you know, um, I'd like to um, put um, some zinc mixing white occasionally on these type of paintings because I look in at that now it's dry and it's darkened and that's what happens with acrylics. They dry, they dry and they darken and sometimes we all make mistakes and we put the paint on a little bit dark. I should have put that on a bit lighter, but not, not the problem. Get some medium mixer, some water, and then just thin this down. It's a bit better with, with the medium mix if you've got some more. But I mean, if you haven't got any of that, don't worry about what the thinning of this because we're going to put another layer on top of this. And I'm just going to go over that with a little bit of zinc mixing white. It's quite transparent. And as you've seen me in many a paintings do this, and this is my quick fix. If I've painted something a little bit dark and I'm thinking, oh me, I, I, what am I going to do now? I don't want to paint over it again. So I'll get some, some zinc mixing white and I'll just knock that back like that. And then just, that's just going to put a very thin layer, a very thin layer of white over those mountains like that. And that's just going to make it look distant. So when we put the other colours on these buildings, you'll find that you'll find it'll pop forward. There we go. Okay, I'll just give that a little wash. Again, what I'm going to do is get the air dryer on that, and I use the air dryer a lot in acrylic painting because I think it helps this the process. Okay, as you heard me say, I hope that's dry enough. <laughs> so I'm going to get a little bit of this ultramarine blue on a strip lining brush. That's one of these very thin, long, pointy brushes, and I'm just going to bring that to a to a point like that. I'm just going to test that. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit lighter than that, because I want this to look as if it's distant trees and things there so I'm just going to put a few lines like this don't know when one tree starts and another one ends <laughs> one of my favorite sayings lately that is there we go just put some lines in like that any which way it doesn't really matter does it put some lines in there a little bit darker there i think maybe just just a few darker ones just to bring them maybe in front of the lighter ones there you go just like that there you go, there you go. give that a little wash put that one side i'm gonna pick up um i'm gonna pick up one of these little brushes there um, this is a natural bristle brush, um, and you can buy these on the website www.clive5art.co.uk. And again, I'm going to pick up some of this blue, ultramarine blue, and mix a little bit of a process cyan in there as well, a bit of white. Tap it down, tappy, 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 tappy. With my little brushes, my little forage brushes, I'm just going to maybe just put in some tree shapes like this a little bit darker as we come down to the bottom there like that a little bit darker not too much don't don't overdo it there we go nice it's got that blue look which is what I like it would make a lovely winter scene this would it would because of the way the blue is on there anyway it's just one a little bit of white, just tap a little bit of white in. Like this. Just a little bit of distance. Just 
trees everywhere. A bit more white. Let's just get a little bit of reflection in them. There we are. So distant, it doesn't really matter, does it? We pick up some plain white and just put a little bit of light like that. There you go. Oh, it's looking nice. It's looking nice. It's getting there. Wash the brush. And I wash the brush in my little brush station. I go in some. That's got a little pad underneath that scrubs the brush, and I wash the brush like that. I put a bit, a bit of soap on it. I go back in there, take the excess off, rinse it through, and then tap it dry with a bit of tissue paper, and I lay it flat. There we go. Okay, now um, I got to pick up. Um, I'm going to pick up a little filbert brush. This is um, a number one, I think. A uh, little tiny little filbert brush, or you can use a short flat, or whatever comes to hand. In fact. I'm just going to get myself a comfortable by you. So I'm going to get some raw sienna, a little bit of raw sienna. Raw sienna is very transparent, so we, we'll add a little bit of um, burnt umber to that, just to give it a little bit of opacity. There we go. It's got to darken the colour up a touch, but that's okay as well. So I'm going to put in the roof of this house now. I'm just going to paint that in like that it's an undercoat yes yeah, an undercoat put the roof of this building in now that in, add in a bit of colour, take our, when we add colour we should put a ground on this and um, I, I forgot, <laughs> I don't mind, because it can affect the eyes sometimes but if we haven't got a ground it doesn't matter, there we are, like I just proved, so it doesn't matter, we're going to do the, we're going to do this roof now, um, let's get a little bit of this colour there and I'm going to add some processed blue to it there we are a bit of white so we've got like a grey colour blue grey colour I think that'd be nice let's put that on it's got a bit of a green tinge to it that's, that's good also ok that'll do it for now bit of a saggy roof this one if I remember it's one of the beams are rotten inside it's making the roof sag a little bit and if it doesn't make it up this is your painting you can do what you like with it so this has got like a bluey greeny color roof we can always play around with that at later stage, can't we? We can. Okay. Next thing to do is get some burnt umber. Add a bit of white to that. So we've got that lovely, light, warm brown colour. And let's have a look at our house. Let's put this chimney in. There, like that. And that comes down. That's the other side of the roof. Looking at my notes, I'm going to stop that there and I'm going to bring that edge of that house there like that. There we are. Now you might be wondering what that shape is there. Well, that's the chimney. 
No, I've noticed it. Sometimes they build the chimney on the outside of the house. And that was the case with this particular one. I don't know why they did that. But anyway, somebody will tell me, I'm sure. brown colour. There we are. We'll paint it all one colour because we know that shape is there so there's no point painting around it. We'll paint it in for now and then we'll, we'll work on that shape later when we put some shading in and stuff. I'm using a thick paint. I want to use. I'm using it quite thin because I wanted to dry quite fast. There we go. So we got we got the buildings coming together there now. And again, let's just mix up a bit more of this color. I got a little bit of, of my flow medium in there, um, which helps the paint to to move about a bit. Just blocking in, just blocking in. I don't know how long this lesson is going to be. I haven't decided whether I'm going to leave these doors open or close. Who knows? Following that line, making sure these lines are following correctly. This side is going to be slightly darker so we want to just make it slightly darker now to save us doing that later on. We know there's a window in there so there's no point painting around it. We can add it in later on. If you wanted to change the size of this building you can do that you can make it slightly smaller if you wanted to it's entirely up to you um, the guidelines are there for a reason they're guidelines um, we don't have to follow those lines they're just there to help us with our composition really canvas is quite absorbent. I don't know if you can see that it's, it is actually sucking in the paint. Perhaps I didn't put enough gesso on it. Gesso helps you, your paint move about freely. This building um, then again um, we can add a little bit of raw sienna in this one. Let's make this a bit redder is it? Let's have a look. Perhaps we can make a little bit more white to that. There we are. We'll bring that in. Just a touch lighter there. There's a window in there. So we'll just paint around that just for now. There you go. Okay, speed it up a little bit. I do apologize, but um, I run out of things to say sometimes when I'm doing something repetitive like that. 
So I'm just going to put a little bit of colour, very lightly, very loosely, um, in the ear. You see that's very thin. I can do that with my medium mix, but we're going to paint on top of this, so it should be okay. And it's, and it's soaking it so deeply into this canvas. Um, if you've got a canvas similar to this, it's just soaking in the paint until you get to about the third or fourth layer. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about over thinning your, your, your acrylic because as long as the, the pigment can be sucked in and held in place by the fibers of the canvas, then you should be fine. That's why you can use acrylics on paper because paper absorbs the paint and holds it together. The problems you come with acrylics is over thinning them when you're actually painting on several layers of acrylic that have not absorbed into the canvas. That's what I'm trying to say. So, okay, we've got a chimney there. We'll try and paint in. Still using the same little brush that I've, that I've been using throughout the process. Put the chimney pots on after. There we go. What I want to look at now, I'm just going to clean that brush and what I want to look at now is maybe get um, a little short flat. I'm going to pick up some raw sienna, a little bit of white. And I'm just going to put in some shapes here like this. You know those old seagulls, uh, I don't know, do they crow? Do seagulls crow or squawk? I don't know. If you know, let me know. <laughs> do seagulls squawk or crow? Who knows? My, my seat is uh, creaking today. To put some oil on it, I think. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of colour there. I'm going to bring in a little bit of colour in front of there like that okay let's get a little bit of Van Dyke Brown let's just bring in a bit of colour like this could use a bigger brush but I want to leave a little bit of canvas showing through a bit of grub. Blend a bit of that back in. Like that. I'm just going to change my brush. I'm just going to get a slightly bigger brush a minute just to speed this process up. So I'm just picking up a one inch short flat. bit some yellow ochre. Yellow ochre I meant. Yellow ochre. Bring a bit of that colour in. This is this is trying to represent some soil or something. Um because I it, it was like um a, a mixture of grass and mud and all this other stuff so at the moment we just we just put in some blocks of color in there like that, because this side is going to be quite dark it's going to be quite a dark green color so if i if i get a little bit of ultramarine blue and a touch of yellow to that we can make a nice dark green like that because that's what it's going to go there like this So I'll put that in, establish that now so we can we've blocked out our canvas. There you go. There we are. So we've blocked out our canvas now. Washing that brush. I'm just looking here. What I want to do now is um I need to bring in some 
bushes and some trees and things like that. So I'm going to pick up, um, this is my smallest um, brush. No, it's not my smallest brush. It's my second smallest brush um, th that I sell on the internet um, uh, on my website for this. I'm going to give it a bit of green. I'm going to make that blue and add a bit of white to it. To lighten that down. There we go. I'm just going to put in some light color you yeah. maybe mix up a little bit more ultra ultramarine blue a bit of yellow a bit of white got a mixture of colors on our brush now I got some dark on there I got some light on there so let's just just put some color there. Let's just darken it up a little bit. You have a, a few hairs coming over these brushes, but don't panic about it because the natural bristle brushes, and that's what happens to them. bit of green in there like that. Tap in the white, the corner of the white with the, the green that's on that brush. I'm just going to put a few sparkly bits. A few sparkly bits. This here and there. Just to lift out a touch like that. Oh yeah, I'll play around with that in a second. How was that look? It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Before we do any more now, I've got to get these buildings um, sorted. I'm just going to leave my brush soaking there. I'm going to work on this roof of this house now. So I'm going to get some burned umber. And it's going to be slightly darker this side. So we'll go into some neat burned umber. Drag a few lines or burn them across the gut edge nice and sharp like that. Concentration on this is important. So I just put a few scaggy lines like that. this color now. Bring a bit of light, getting a little bit of this burn dumber in. Just to darken the edge off. Like that. Oh, it's looking like something. Okay. Let's get some of this light color. And let's start 
strengthening up the main building. I think I'm going to come there and make this building a little bit bigger. Put a bit of light just on this roof. Concentrating on this building now. I'm going to change over to. Um, small detail brush, this is a one detail brush again I'm going into some burnt umber bit of light now just on this back of the chimney because it seems to be catching a little bit of light or it does in my world because if that's lighter then the back of this is going to be light there you go we have a little pot, pot there and we got another little pot there like that and we get some burnt number possibly a small amount of black just to give this edge a sharp shadow like that just to make it look some sort of dimension there. I'm just going to pick up my cork on a stick. I'm going to put another line there like that. It's going to come down. And while I'm at it, I just want to put a, a shadow line down that edge there. to show that possibly there's a bit of a roof. I just rinse my brush very quickly. I'm going to thin that colour down with this brush. I'm just going to drag down a little bit of shadow across this building like that. Bringing in some dots to represent maybe some brickwork or something is going on there like this and don't forget we did say we had this shape didn't we and that was coming down like that and then you can see that there then and that, that, that little bit of light catching Dotty marks, dot dot dot, like as if it's bricks. We can put some 
light bricks in as well. You put as many of these in as you want, so just this is all about detailing now, so as far as that is concerned. have a few. Let's just get some black, some burnt umber and let's just put a, just a few marks like this. There you go. So that's uh, that building's looking pretty good there now. Back into this black and burned umber. Really going to darken in this section there. Put a bit of light in there as well, just to. Break that up like that. It's like as if there's a window there. It's black now. Just under there. Make it look as if it's a shadow. black bricks and down on edge there like that some like the bricks Line under there, and then what we can do, we can lighten a bit of this color up. Let's just get this building just to catch a bit of light, like that. There we are, can these lighter marks then here and there. We got tiles on this roof, so just run down a little bit of light like that, just to see us possibly a couple of ridges in these tiles, just catching a, a little bit of light there. And again, we can do the same with black and put some. Shadow lines in. Like that. It's coming together quite nicely now. Um, I'm going back into my little filbert brush. Um, I just let that soak. You shouldn't really let them soak, but I don't mind. Picking up a bit of blue, and I'm gonna just blue off this roof a bit. There we are. Some 
in Burn Dunbar. Let's put some thin colour in there. It's got a little bit of paint left. Not too worried, over worried about that. I got a bit of yellow, uh, raw sienna, which I'm going to go into now. The side of this building. A little bit of burnt umber just to darken that off with a little bit of shadow difference of color picking up my detail brush again going in this bit of burnt umber and black and I'm going to put a shadow line just under there like that and I'm going to put another shadow line there just to edge that off and while I'm at it I'm going to put a shadow line down here just to give it a little bit of dimension there you go a little bit of black and a little bit of ultramarine blue that's going to give me a Payne's grey ultramarine blue and black Payne's grey as you can see so I'm going to put a little bit of blue in there like that And come in with a bit of black. get the shadows that's possibly going on in that building there it's a tool shed again get the black just down that one edge because we've lost it a bit It's coming, it's coming. Right, what I want to think about now is getting some of these brick patterns on uh, on this building. Like that. A good way to paint churches and stuff. You don't want a lot of detail. Yeah, just, just so the eye can, yeah, that's definitely a. Uh, Definitely a building there. There we are. Get a bit of this paint's grey now, and let's just get this. couple of marks across our building there like that I'm trying to paint something this complicated this quick it's not easy anyway I'm going to get myself a little short flat. Um, I'm going to get some burnt umber. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put in some shadow marks. 
just under this grass area there like that just to give it a just lift it make it look as if there's something going on there like that we can use the same effect down here like that not going to get a lot of the light is hitting these walls there so that's going to be obscured you'll see why that's darker than that because there's going to be a tree in the way so it's good sometimes to think of these things in advance you know roughly where you're going to be going with it then What I want to do now is I've got a little brush here. The 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 bristles are slightly shorter than eighty percent of them are shorter than the others, so it's it's called a a foliage brush. If you haven't got one of these, you can use um, any brush really. Again, we want to mix some green, to mix a bit of um, processed cyan, a little bit of yellow taking the excess off that brush and I'll just put in a little bit of that colour there a bit lighter I'm just going to get another bit of tissue paper I gotta think about now is this tree so I'm gonna use one half inch short flat I got some burnt umber and some black I'm gonna mix a nice dark color because I want to put this tree in here now before I start I think it's gonna come down there thinking about this tree as it is I got a branch that's going to be coming out there Just do the the main lines with this, this brush, and we can fill it in later on with a script lining brush. This tree's got ivy growing over it. There you go. Got a big old boy, this one. And we've got another one. We've got another one here that's going to come in. No, I'm going to go downwards this time.
You're not going to see much of this one because this one's got a lot of ivy. growing out of it. And if you're doing a, a, a painting like this and you, 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 you've taken some photographs and you think, oh, it would be nice if that tree was by there. Well, you can move it, can't you? This is your world. You can do anything you want. Clean your brush. I'm just going to put some shadowing into this green now, so I'm cleaning my brush off. Starting to come together. Okay, I want to go back into um, my detailing brush now. And again, picking up a bit of that blue and um, black that we made. That, that paint's grey. I'm just going to. Colour this in. I want to put a bit more black. Down that edge. There. Again, going into this window, put a bit more shadow under there, like that. Put a bit of shadow under that one now. Dip the tip of my brush into some medium mix, just took a moisture off like that, just to run this shadowing down. There we go. So picking up a script lining brush, a bit of burnt number, whatever colour, doesn't really matter, put in a few. lines like this just to represent possibly some bits and pieces going on there just to give it a little bit of dimension um, mine's taking your mind off the trees for the moment and let's get our um, brush that we put the trees in at the background let's uh, let's, let's pick up some let's pick up some Oops. I want to go a bit darker than that. So I'm going to add a little bit more ultramarine blue to it. Bit of yellow ochre. Let's change up the flavour. That's better. Just added a touch of black to that. I want it a bit darker, maybe a little bit more black. I want dark, I want it quite, that's it, I want it quite dark in the front, yeah. Let's have a bit of that. It's all just just tap it on like this. Just get some p random patterns and some different colours in there, just to 
build that up for the moment. The other thing we've got to do now is I want to get some Mars black there and some yellow. Mars black's got blue in it. Adding the yellow is going to make it a green. Oh, quite a dark green. And then I can lighten that, continue and lighten it down then with some yellow. I'm going to put, this is ivy that I'm putting on this tree now. This is going all over this tree. It's a weed basically. But a lot of the trees, especially where I live, um, are covered in this. And this, this, this is completely covered. I'll put a picture up and um, I'll show you what I mean of how it grows. It's quite a true safety as far as the tree is concerned. I don't know if it does a tree any harm, but there's certainly loads of it about here. Oh, this one has a, I don't think that's got much around there, so I'll be fine like that. Put a bit of this colour now just down there, just to darken up the sections. There's no point wasting the, the paint that's on your brush. You just you can put that in like that. Okay, all I did was um, I've just put a quick coat of this zinc mixing white on there, just to knock it back a touch. Um, I thought that would be good. I just dried that with a hairdryer and I thought right let's get into this now so what we got to do I want to I want to work on this path a little bit um, so using the one in short flat I got a little bit of black and that burnt umber color I'm just gonna put in some darker marks like that like this bring in a darker in the foreground Spreading that through very lightly. Put a bit of colour just down there. Like that. Put a bit of this raw sienna now back in there. A bit of yellow ochre. And that's all you need to do because these paths are quite muddy. There's little bits, little bits of grass. My tongue is getting tied around my teeth. Little bits of grass here and there. Little pockets of grass which we'll put in in a second. But for now I think that'll be that. Now I've got a cunning plan because I want to put some pebbles in there. And I'm going to introduce you to my tilty brush. This is my tilty brush. <laughs> Doesn't, uh, I don't use this to clean my... Well I used to clean this cleaning my teeth but I don't use it anymore. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we got a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of white. Whereas I want a, I want a couple of lighter, lighter ones, a little bit of moisture. There we are. I've moved my, why did I move that off there? Oh, I, I wanted to, did I put my medium mix? There it is. <laughs> there we are. I was running out of palette space, so I thought, I'll just move my medium mix out the way. There you go. Just off camera. So get that quite runny like that and, and you bring it towards you like this. Don't go away from you. Don't go that way. Go this way. Otherwise you've got to be covered in paint. And I've done that. So. Just put a few flicky marks. There like that. Just to make it look like gravel or something. And if you're very quick, what I suggest you do is get a, a dry brush and just brush it in where you don't want it there we are very very quick or you could cover it up with a bit of masking tape or whatever but in this instance that's fine and uh, again I'm gonna go and pick up some Van Dyke Brown and put a bit of 
that in there as well. It's a bit, a bit more. There we go. A bit of texture. I'm going to chuck that straight into a pot of water because I don't want it to dry on my toothy brush. And I'm just going to get this brush and I'm just going to blend that back just a touch there. Like that. And I'm going to leave them as they are intact. So um, I'm going to need a. Um, where's my little filbert? I got a little filbert brush here. And again, going back into that yellow ochre, a little bit of raw sienna, a little bit of burnt umber. Let's just get a, a rock looking colour. And maybe we'll put in some darker pebbles. Using a little stroke like that. Just little stones. A bit of highlight. Just on the odd top of what I'm on there. That. Just put a few pebbles here and there. That'll do. Make these quite dark on there. Yeah? Maybe a little bit of black. Quite a pebbly old path, there we are. Just to give it a little bit of character. Now, we're looking at this building again. I'm using the same brush. And we made a little bit of Payne's Grey, didn't we, for that. So let's just darken that up. Because there's a little bit of that zinc mixing white on there. What's going to happen is it's going to look darker. This is what we want. We want to make it look as if it's really dark in there and shadowy. And that's one way I found of doing it. And I like putting this zinc mixing white on things because it can tone it down for you. And it's a, a little trick that a lot of artists use that is not very common, um, commonly showed in fact, but because it allows us to put things in shadows in like that very thin mix now let's put a um, thin mix let's put a little bit of shadow in across the top of this Roof. There we are. We want a bit of shadow down here. A little bit of shadow in there. There we are. And we want a little bit of shadow there. Just darken that off a touch. There's going to be a shadow cast across here. Because of the tree. So we just darken that off a bit. All I'm using is a very thin wash of colour. And I can do that because I'm using my medium mix. But if you haven't got any medium mix, then just use a little bit of water aside. And what I suggest you do is try and varnish the paintings afterwards. And that's going to prevent that from peeling. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Let's put a little bit of shadow coming off there like that. I'm going to put a bit of let's deepen this shadow across there. I'm going to put a little bit of colour in this window. There we are. A bit more moisture, a bit more of this. It has a little bit small in fact, I think I'll um, let's just get another short flat. There we are, I just tap that in the water a little bit. 
Let's just spread that Payne's Grey Shadow effect around like that. Put a little bit of shadow in just on the ground there. Like that. And we'll sit back, as my friend Jason says, we'll have a little look. And now I've got my little um, detailing brush. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that brownie black because I've got some. Trestles or farm tools or something leaning up against there. I don't know what this is. It could be, it could be anything, couldn't it? I'll put some sort of a wheelie type of thing there, and we'll put some more things standing up there. Because this is a farm building, and it could be anything, couldn't it? I'm just going to light that colour. Got a little bit of that light the brown colour. Just to put a little bit of highlight. Just on a few things like that. It could be anything. We just just make that up. Don't have to be anything in particular. It just looks nice, I think. Um, what we could do now, because some of this lighter green here, and we could put some green there like this bit of dark could be anything couldn't it a little bit of green a little bit of green coming down we'll go into the dark green first and I think we'll put a little bit of lighter green then and we'll just flick up a few Just little highlights. Could be weeds or could be some sort of flower. I'll put a picture up um of some well I took a dog for a walk and you could you could see the hedgerows and things and there's there's all these little tiny flowers and things that could be there. And these things could be white or they could be blue or they could be red, they could be foxgloves, it could be anything really, can they? Just a little bit of just a little bit of colour there, I think. There we go. I'll do for now. And we could put a bit of grass there. Back to that in a second. Now I want to have a look at my tree, so I'm going to need my script liner for this, and I'm going to go now into some raw sienna, some yellow ochre, a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of Van Dyke brown. We'll just get this colour like this, and let's just get this. I haven't got that into a sharp point. You've got to get a sharp point on these things. There you go. Let's get a bit more dark in there. I don't want it too light. It's not flowing. Add a little bit more. Don't 
don't know why that's not sometimes these paint brushes get a bit cloggy and they don't run as you want them to but there we go a little bit of shaking hands in there going there we go you want this quite thin and you want to pull it to a sharp point like that try and get that point on it otherwise you you won't get what what do you want out of the brush otherwise there you go that's because I didn't put enough paint on the brush so we've got to be careful as well and we'll just let the camera roll as I do this Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just bring in a bit of, oops, <laughs> what I'm going to do now is bring in a bit of black, it would be quite surprising because that was white, but we'll put a little bit of bark on there like this. Spend a little bit more time, as I said, on your paintings than I do on mine. I'll do because that's going to be green isn't it I think it is right let's look at this washing that brush I'm going to pick up some of this lighter green now bring a bit of white to it sparkle that light up let's just put some little flecks of green like that yellow a bit of blue let's just blue that up a bit let's green it up I should say nice and thin let's just put some bits of grass I won't do that by the tree for the moment but I'll do this bits of grass in my eyes a little bit of weed or whatever that is could be anything okay it's got a bit of weed here it's all about creating an effect Spend hours, hours. This is going to darken, so don't think it's going to be that bright. Because acrylics, as you said, as I've said, as you said, as you said, as I've said, <laughs> acrylics, as I've said in the past, dry, dry, a little bit darker, a couple of shades darker. So don't be too worried about that. And if it is a little bright, then we can always paint a few little leaves and stuff over it, can't we? Later on, it's just a little indication that there's 
some grass and weeds growing. You can have long grass, it doesn't all have to be short, does it? You can see the way I'm using the brush quite close, but I'm, I'm flicking it both ways like that. Anyway, leave that for a minute. I want to get onto this tree now, and again I'm picking up uh, one of my brushes. And I'm going to look at looking it, looking at some green. I don't know whether to make it some black and some yellow together because I want that darkish green. There we go. Like an olivey type of colour. Doing that to the brush, taking the excess off, chucking that in a bin, tapping it down like that, tapping it down like that. Fill it up, full of paint, fill it up, full of paint, there you go. And let's look, now this is all around the tree, this is wrapping all around the tree, so we'll put... ...some green... ...all around this tree. And as it comes down, it's going to get a little bit darker down here. Okay, now this one, what we've got to remember is it's just going down the side of that tree. So we're going to paint the trunk in in a minute. I didn't paint it in first because I want to get the, the ivy on there. And then we can paint the trunk in, strengthen that up. Okay, so I'm going to lighten that up again with a bit more yellow. Lighten it up with a bit more yellow. Again, tapping the brush. I'm taking the excess off my brush. Like that. Tapping it back in the paint. A little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. Pockets. Pockets of light. Like putting leaves on a tree. So all they're doing is put an ivy on the tree. It's the same it's the same difference. Since all this is is loads of little tiny leaves and things. I'm pulling up like that just to get some grass in there. There we are. Again, remembering that you only see a little bit of that. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to put that in the pot. I'm picking up my short flat again. I'm going back into my my browns, burnt umber. I got some yellow ochre to lighten it. Now I'm going to bring in this tree now. do get a little bit of that black color black and burnt umber mix take the excess off my brush I can pick up some paint off this as well as as rubbing it away I'm just gonna put in a few shadow marks like as if it's a, a thickly barked tree could be an ash tree could be an oak tree could be um, any tree really if it's a dead tree I think because the old ivy's had its had its day, and it's it's actually taken the, the the life out of that tree. It certainly have. And while we got that brush in our hand, let's put a little bit of shadow back into this. Ground like that. And um, we're not too far away now, I tell you what, we're not too far away. So I'm going to pick up my little detailing brush again. I'm going to pick up some... Um, some white and some uh, paint's grey we made. I'm just going to put a few 
chickens. There you go. A few chickens. Don't look like chickens, but they are chickens. A little tiny bit of black. Bit of white. Just represent some chickens. They're so far away you can't see them, but they're there pecking pecking the worms out of the soil. <laughs> um what else can I show you? Let me have a think. Um Okay, so just using a short flat again and just on the edge and you, you can you can create some grass grasses like this or weeds or whatever and just put in some different weed shapes there you go mass of grass or whatever Lovely jubbly. Get a bit of white to that. Sparkle this grass up a touch. We're just picking up a light a little bit here and there. Use a small detailing brush for this. Don't do what I'm doing because um, I'm just doing this to speed things up a bit because I'm lazy. But you can do it this way if you want to, but you get a better effect using a smaller brush. There you go. It's looking quite nice. What we can do then um, is ask you to like, comment, share and subscribe that's important and we can put in some larger leaves like this just by tapping this detail brush there you go just a few little dots here and there on the and please comment on the videos I read all my comments I answer my comments and I love my emails and please ask me uh, any question you want or ask me to critique your work I will eventually get to it I promise it does, does take me time sometimes and um, again please click that subscribe button if it's the first video you watched of mine and if it isn't and um, you want uh, to know when I'm uploading then if you subscribe you will always get notifications of when my videos come online which is every monday so um thank you very much for joining me in the studio and painting the stress of everyday life with me in wales and until next time i will see you then and don't forget to click subscribe